Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, December 16th. It is 7.15 p.m. We're starting our regular agenda. Uh, this meeting is being recorded by ACMI and may be recorded by other people. And I just wanted to point out that uh, we had another meeting earlier that we did at, at 6 o'clock, which was a meeting with our systems analyst talking about um, a potential software requ requirements for changing the way that we do meetings, moving from paper, uh, hopefully, to a more electronic process. I just wanted people to know about that other meeting. So our first item is a, an agenda, is a proclamation. Uh, Mr. Greeley, would you be so kind? Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, you know, uh, here in Arlington, we, um, well, I at least, very much value uh, families and successful businesses. And tonight, this proclamation is to celebrate an outstanding Arlington family uh, that has conducted a business for the last 50 years here in Arlington. It's uh, hard to imagine that, that it's been 50 years. But uh, this particular family has produced for 50 years this particular item, which all of you who live in Arlington have gotten for free for the last 50 years, and it's called the Arlington Town Book. And you know, the other day I'm working with my son, who's a junior at Mattingon, and we were looking for a telephone number and I said to him, go out and get me the town book. To which he said, what are you looking for, Dad? I gave him the name, like in three seconds, on the laptop, he had the information, right? I'll never get there. I will always be using uh, <laughs> something like this. But, uh, you know, 50 years is, a, is a, quite a period of time to have provided uh, quite a quality service to this community. So we've asked the entire Russell family to be here with us tonight and to be represented by the president of the Russell Group, Mr. Tim Russell. Now, Tim and I went to the Junior High West together. Um, I know it's now Audison Middle School, but when the West was the best and the East was the least. <laughs> Tim was the outstanding athlete, big, uh, most popular guy, dated the best looking woman, ended up marrying her. Um, and uh, so we've been friends a long time, but. Uh, families and businesses are what the lifeblood of this community. So uh, on behalf of this board, and I thank them for this, they have asked that I read this proclamation. Now these proclamations are done in Old English, and they go back to colonial times when literally a town crier would each day proclaim what had been determined by a board of selectmen or mayor or whatever the case may be. So there's a lot of whereases and now therefores. So I'm going to put you all to work. I do public proclamations. When I point at you, I want you all to say whereas, and you better do it loud because I'm not beyond calling on people, and I'll do the rest of it. All right, so here we go. Whereas. Nice. In September 1964, Walter Russell, with the love and support of his wife, Catherine, started the Arlington Guide and Directory. Today, we celebrate the 50th anniversary of this occasion, and whereas. Very good. Their idea was a simple one. Give Arlington businesses an opportunity to promote themselves and provide a valuable resource for all residents. And yes. with Catherine sitting every evening, hand copying and checking phone numbers for inclusion in the guide, and Walter selling to all the local businesses, they published this guide for the next 20 years. And yes. Upon Walter's death in 1983, his son Tim became president. For the next 30 years, under his leadership, the, someone's disagreeing, is that one of your grandkids? <laughs> the company grew to be known as the Russell Group and continued to provide this resource at no cost to all Arlington residents and... Yes. Just one more after this, hang in there. In addition to advertisements and resident listings, Tim and the Russell family include pertinent information on Arlington schools, churches, libraries, and a directory of all town services. And yes. in this age of electronic communications, many still view this town book as a very valuable resource and the first place one consult for Arlington information. The Russell Group will be publishing their 51st edition in September of 2014. Now, therefore be it resolved that we, the members of the Board of Selectmen, along with town manager and our administrator, do hereby congratulate Tim Russell, 
the Russell family, and the Russell Group on providing 50 years of valuable information to all Arlington citizens and businesses and thank them for their contributions as private citizens and business owners and be it further resolved. In recognition of this outstanding achievement as a family and business, we do hereby declare this 13th day of January 2014 to be the Tim Russell, Russell Group, and Arlington Town Book Day throughout this town and ask all citizens near and far to pay heed thereto. Tim, come up and get me. have as big a circulation as the town book, but there are millions at home. Would you mind saying a few words? Right in here. I'm obviously very, very humbled by, by this acknowledgement, uh, and I thank uh, Kevin and the Board of Selectmen for offering this to me and my family. I'm also humbled by seeing all of my family, or many of my family members here, and friends. I would just like to say my dad started this back in 64 as a supplement to uh, his teaching salary. Um, uh, he had eight kids to bring up, he and uh, my mother, Catherine, uh, and uh, he stayed with it for many, many years until his passing, and we, uh, uh, we took it from there, and uh, thankfully, uh, things have worked out very, very well. So once again, thank you. Very, very much. I, all right, direct. Oh, wait. Go. No, I, I, I just want to say thank you. I can tell when I first entered into Arlington as a parent, I grew here moved here when I was seven years old, but the first time I became aware of, of the Russell book in the Arlington Town book was as a parent. It was a way for me to get connected with the schools. I considered Arlington's first Google because, <laughs> and one of the things later on in life that I saw from this book, that it, it was a book published by a family that cares about the community because you hit every nail on the head. My first introduction raising my awareness of town meeting members, you know, where to find my Baptist church. And over the years, I said, somebody about this really cares. And I do want to say, you know, every time I've run, starting from the beginning in 97, when I lost, there were two things that were vital to me, the true list and the town book. Because and it, you took somebody else's town book, and you had to do that lit drop. And you couldn't find Windmill or Oldham or, you know, coming from the east, and we'll talk about e West is the best later. Um, <laughs> but we kicked your fanny room. But anyways, um, <laughs> but I, I really, it's not just an Arlington, it is an Arlington town book, um, and it's a very valuable asset, but I want to say it's a very community-oriented asset. And I want to thank the Russell family for doing that for 50 years and providing that for free. Um, You'd be hard pressed to find any other family, any other business that devoted um, to their community. So I want to thank you personally for the many uses. And, I, I, and, and I'd just like to add, I'd like to thank the advertising that the board has made for so many years. This is a very vital And, and leadership is awesome in the town, too, isn't it? <laughs> Not to mention the leadership. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. I have to do a 
before the consent agenda, we have the minutes of the meetings for December 16th. Move approval. Uh, reappointment of the Cyrus, Dart, uh, Cyrus Dallin Art Museum Board of Trustees member Geraldine Tremblay. Uh, we have approval for the ca uh, second annual Bladder Cancer Awareness Walk for May 3rd. We have approval for the Arlington Enrichment Collaborative Annual 5K Fundraiser, which is April 27th. And we have a request for hanging of banners in the Arlington Center for the Arlington Reads Together program from our library detector, uh, director, Ryan Livergood. We have a motion of approval from Mr. Greeley. Is there a second? Second. Second. Mrs. Mahan. Just, I just want to make sure that um, the hanging of banners in Arlington Center for the Arlington Reads Together, it's going to be the same font and for format as before because I know there were previous banners that were hung that several residents said, you know, you, there's no way you could read them. So I'm assuming it's the same style, same font. It's my understanding these are the same Arlington Reads banners, yes, that have been hung in the past. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Uh, before I go on to the next item, uh, I did have one thing that I neglected to do at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, generally, it works better if you do a somber moment before you do your uh, celebratory moments, but there's a point that I neglected to mention, which is uh, I think we should have a moment of silence for uh, the passing of our town meeting member, Dick Smith. Um, as our, I know there's memorial service uh, or memorial event for him this past weekend. Um, on, and Dick, and of course, uh, with his wife Ann by her side, have been pillars in this community. Um, they certainly, you know, they helped me get elected. They helped a lot of us up here get elected, and they've been uh, active members of the town uh, for decades. So, um, a moment uh, for in memory of Dick Smith. Thank you, everyone. Next up, we have uh, a point. We have the uh, the byway committee. Now that we have approved the memorandum, we need members on the committee. Yes. I, we have Linda and her sister here just to say two words about the bladder cancer. Oh, I apologize. I very much apologize. Back up under I, the consent agenda. I knew it. Uh, could you please come on up and talk to us about your event? Well, I take back my affirmative vote. <laughs> oh, no, I'm I apologize. I, I just wanted to thank everybody here. We had the walk last year. It was approved here. Um, it went well. Our mom died um, a little bit over a year ago, so we did the walk in, in May of last year to stop Mass Ave to, to this spot. We have some great pictures, and um, we want to do it again. We raised a couple thousand dollars, and it was terrific. So thank you for your support last year and for your support this year. And to Marie, thank you. Thank you. Good luck. What, this is on May 3rd. May 3rd. What, are, you gonna, are you gonna doing early registration or anything like that, or it's just it's show up and enjoy? Do you want to come on up to the mic? This is your this is your it's moment the of PR. Bladder Cancer Awareness Walk on May 3rd, 2014. Uh, we'll probably start around Forest Street and walk up and then back. It's a very fa family friendly event, and there are some physicians at Mass General who want to become involved, who are treating patients with bladder cancer, and possibly from the Brigham as well. Um, and so we welcome people from all over, but it's going to be on the BCAN.org uh, site, um, and it will be the Arlington Walk. So it's the only walk in the Boston area, um, but BCAN runs walks all around the United States. So um, Arlington is going to be doing a lot of good for this um, disease, which is a very <coughs> common cancer. I think it's the 11th most common cancer um, killer of people, and you don't really hear about it, so we really need to get awareness going and funds raised for research. Thank you. Can I ask, is it B can B or B E? It's can. B C A N, and it's okay. Bladder Cancer Awareness Network okay. is what it stands for. So um, we um, hope everyone will come out. It was a really beautiful day last year. We had a lot of babies and kids and dogs, and it was just a nice event um, to be out in Arlington and walking and getting support from people. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have a memorandum of understanding which has created uh, the for the Battle Road Scenic Byway, and we need to appoint members. And uh, Angela Olszewski and Howard Winkler. Is Howard Winkler? Yeah, come yep. on up. And Angela as well. I think we, we know them both. They've both been here, but since it's a new appointment for this committee, we do appreciate your coming in. So I know that you both have spent a lot of time on the uh, creating this byway uh, committee. 
So you might as well just tell us where you are and where you're trying to, you know, what you're hoping is going to happen in the next couple of years. I will start. We have our report. We know what we want to do. What's preventing us from moving ahead is funding. And uh, <clears throat> the people at the Massachusetts uh, Area Planning Council are certainly looking around for state and federal funds, but uh, right now things are uh, very limited in terms of funding of that's available. But things do change, and I'm always hopeful. Thank you for volunteering. Angela? I don't have too much to add to what Howard said, except you know we, we worked this fall. The project was to get the MOU done so that we would have a formal structure and organization. So we're glad to have that accomplished. Questions from the board? Is there a motion? Oh, Kevin? Uh, yeah, mo motion to approve. Uh, is that Second. Yeah, yeah, motion to approve. And uh, you know, again and again, both of you have stepped up for this community, whether it's town meeting or the number of other committees that both of you have served on. Thank you so much for that. It makes a big difference. Thank you for your support, of course. Diane? Um, just one question, uh, uh, probably two. Um, since it's not in this document, I'm, I'm just thinking every time you set up boards and commissions and different areas that are in there, that you're anticipating all your meetings will be public meetings and you won't need to have any executive session meetings. We have never had an executive session. Okay, that's fine. And then um, I want, just want to make sure I'm reading the language properly that it says something to the effect no one can serve more than two consecutive terms, but then if there's a break and that person's really great, can they come back and serve another two consecutive? It's just I the way it's think, written, it's not clarified. I don't think clarified. this has come up. Yeah. So, we, so we approved this memorandum at a previous meeting, I'm pretty sure. And then, and so it's really just, we're appoint, but uh, the memorandum permits us to appoint up to three people, and so this is us filling those seats. Okay, well I just want to leave it, since you're here at the microphone, it, it, it's um, article four, <coughs> num num number three, just you know, the way I'm reading it, and it's not really said, implied, or, or maybe I'm misreading it, no member can serve for more than two consecutive terms. Yes. I, th I think that's speaking specifically in reference to the chair, vice chair, and secretary. Mm. Right. About not being able to serve for consecutive terms. But if you look at section three, uh, uh, paragraph labeled number one, uh, I believe the board has the ability to reappoint uh, for two year renewable terms just for members of the committee. Okay, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'll let, if the case comes up, you guys will deal with it. Thank you. We'll figure it out. Thank you. Is there, so we have a motion from Mr. K uh, Greeley. Is there a second? I second. second. Uh, any further questions from the board? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you for volunteering. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Arlington Cultural Council appointment, Frank Tadley. Mr. Tadley, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've got your resume in front of us, and we have that you were recommended by uh, the Arlington Cultural Council to be appointed. Yes. Um, do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you want to do? Well, I am a photographer, a fine art photographer. I went to New England School of Photography. I also do a lot of art installations. I had been, till a recent injury, the principal uh, installer of art at the Griffin Museum of Photography. I also happen to be the program coordinator of the Senior Association. So this lends a sort of uh, continuum of, of experience. I know a lot about art. I also know about organizing things. I also know about what happens when you try to put on a function. So one of the things that really affects the Cultural Council is understanding how these grants work, trying to find the best pathway for people, and you know get the good art out into the community that makes it uh, you know, a successful venture. Move approval. Second. Questions? I must say, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Joe. I, I just want to say I, I appreciate you stepping up and volunteering for this, and, and I think it'll be a real asset. Your your connection with the seniors association mm -hmm. kind of help help with our artistic you know outreach to um, you know different sectors of the community and um, and kind of open up some of the opportunities. And uh, right, I mean one of the things that the council is trying to do is make sure it reaches the greatest segment of the population all across the town. It's interesting, uh, Peter. I hadn't so you're the Peter Griffin. Uh, uh, Peter Griffin's a family friend of mine. Oh yes. And uh, John Lawler is my uncle. 
Oh, so, okay. Uh, it's always so, a small world. Yeah, exactly. So the Griffin Museum is a photography museum in Winchester. I don't know if anyone has had the opportunity to go there. I, I'm, I know I'm going to I'm going to briefly sing the praises of something that's in Winchester, but it is next to us <laughs> and it's kind of nice. And there's actually nowhere out to eat. And so after board meetings of the Griffin Museum, they come to Arlington for drinks and dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's the <laughs> that's the tie-in. Anyway, uh, so uh, he's a. Fa a uh, very famous photographer in particular, he, uh, Kodak gave him access to early color film that nobody else had that was like test run film. And so all of the color photos of Ted Williams were done by him. So there's an entire wing of the museum that's like, that's pictures of Ted Williams and other uh, Red Sox things. Uh, so, you know. I think I hear people running to Winchester right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's closed now, and when they're done, they can come back to Maybe they can bring a traveling exhibit <laughs> over here. Visualization <laughs> at its finest. And it's been made clearer why our chairman would like such a, such a display. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so we have um, a motion. We have a second. Any further questions or comments? <coughs> all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you very much for volunteering. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, next up is Citizens Open Forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted there's a three minute time limit to present a, present a concern or request. Is there anyone here who's here for Citizens Open Forum? I'm not seeing anybody. Next up, item six, traffic rules and other business. Receipt and authoriza authorization to negotiate RFP space at Parliament or School. Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so the board uh, may recall that last fall, um, uh, the board both reviewed and approved an RFP for the space at the Parliament or School. Uh, so this agenda item is really um, asking or providing and asking for two things. Providing the board with the responses that were received to that RFP, and then asking for authorization from the board for the town manager to work with town council and also the management analyst, Mike Bowton, to negotiate final leases with the two bidders uh, and then bring back leases for the board to execute uh, as the landlords for the property. So um, as you can see in the memo that was provided by uh, Mike Bowton, the two current tenants were the only two bidders. So the Arlington Children's Center and International School of Boston were the only two bidders for the space. Uh, however, they both came in with financial bids that were higher than the minimum bid prices that we'd set. Uh, so they uh, financially did better for the town than what we were asking. And as we required, they both met with the new capital contribution that was included as part of the lease. Uh, you can see in the materials provided that uh, one of the bidders <coughs> requested uh, a small amount of changes to the model lease, and one of the bidders requested a large number of changes to the model lease with most of those changes being focused on the fact that there is a capital contribution now being paid and them wanting assurances about how that capital contribution will be spent and what role they'll play in deciding what investment is made in the building. Um, so we'll of course negotiate uh, if authorized by the board in the best interest of the town um, and happy to answer any questions the board has in regard to that matter. Joe? Um, I went through, I, I made a number of notes, but I, I think there's just one primarily yeah. that I'm interested in. The, the tenant who requested that the greatest number of changes um, had actually um, made a request around the offer to extend th and which page are you looking at uh, it is on page three of the well I'm looking at page three of the um, marked up the red line model contract Offer to extend, is that what you're Offer to offer? extend, okay. section, section four. four. Yep. I just want to ensure, I, it doesn't look like this is going to restrict our rights because I think we were very clear in our discussion here that we wanted to make sure that any lease that's, that's, that's closed would um, be um, extended for that additional five year period only by mutual um, Mutual, mutual consent. Yeah. It doesn't look like this impacts that, but I just want to make sure because I'll make did, sure that we. Um, they did take out a, one of the bullets around uh, consideration for. Um, I'll make sure that the board's original intention is maintained okay. in anything we negotiate in that matter. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Yes, I move that we authorize the town manager to uh, move forward and to bring us uh, the final offers. Is that right? Uh, is that what? You're right? Second. Motion by Kevin. Second by Joe. Diane. If I could just indulge um, the town manager just because I'm, I'm always challenged by charts and things 
Um, and this may not apply. Um, I'm on page five, section seven. Of the second lease it looks like. Yes. So two pages from where Mr. Carroll just referenced. In s section seven A, the two numerical figures, do they correlate, coincide with any of the figures you've given us in this graph? Or is, is it two completely different just entities? Looking at the wrong page, I'm sorry. Please and they may not. I, I just am not well versed with these documents. So, like, can I find the 139.460 and the 11.621.67? Is that contained in this graph that we have here? Or is this graph a completely different reference point? Um, yeah, uh, sorry. I, I just gave, I apologize. I tried to help out, and I think I made things oh, more confusing. Okay. Uh, Diane's actually in the first lease, and I thought she was in the second. Oh. No, I, I was the one who said the wrong oh, thing. Okay. I'm no, sorry. I, I think I'm looking at the right one. You read, you said 139,460? Right. I'm just wondering. So if you go to. Do these figures correlate to anything with what we have in this graph that was given to us? Or is this two different animals? So, so if, you, if you go, um, are you looking at that? So if, you, if you're at the top line, the space A comparison. Correct. And you look at FY 2015, and you go over to International School of Boston proposed bid. Annual gross rent matches the 139.460. Okay, thank you. I, what that we, we, we're, we're not showing the math of the monthly that they have there. Okay. But we are demonstrating the gross. So it should it should tie out. So the the, the 11.621. Correct. Comes to okay. It's just I saw the one and not the other, and th that's because I'm not well versed with this. Thank you for explaining sure, no that problem. to me. I apologize. I guess I had one question, which was, uh, and maybe you, you don't want to answer this for negotiating purposes in a public meeting, but I'll try it and you can decide. So I read the, um, the changes and I didn't see anything that set off any red flags for me. Uh, is, did, was there anything in particular that you're concerned or you said like, I look at some of these and say, well, I'm sure that this will wash back and forth a little bit in the debate and we'll come out in a fine place. But there's nothing that I said, wow, they're asking for something that I don't think is reasonable or I don't feel comfortable with. Um, was there anything of that level of distress for you? Not for me. I, I had the same reaction that you did. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion by Mr. Greeley, second by Mr. Curo to perm, uh, permit the town manager to negotiate these leases. Please say aye. 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 Opposed? Five zero. Thank you. Next up, study economic impact of Arlington's theater. Mr. Fields. Thank you, Mr. Chair and the board for allowing me to uh, present some key findings to you from a uh, recently commissioned report uh, on behalf of the planning department uh, conducted by Cambridge Economic Research uh, entitled The Economic Impacts of Arlington's Theaters. As you well know, Arlington has two theaters, the capital and the Regent which have anchored vibrant business districts uh, for nearly 100 years. Uh, they are both flagship and gateway businesses. They're flagship businesses because they have large impact on surrounding businesses. And they're also gateway businesses because they bring in large numbers of people from outside of town where they not only patronize the theaters but surrounding businesses. Uh, in terms of numbers, the two theaters bring in about 200,000 people every year. 120,000 of those people come from outside of town. Uh, the region alone, for example, this past Christmas week from the 26th to the 31st of December uh, hosted 4,000 patrons for their shows. Uh, these people spend heavily uh, in Arlington businesses besides the theaters. Uh, annually, they spend $2.4 million uh, and outside uh, or people from outside of town are counted, account for $1.6 million of that spending. Um, on average, uh, the, a theater patron spends $45. Uh, a regular theater goer, five, the, goes five or more times a year, spends nearly $60. And folks coming from outside of town uh, to go to the theater spend about $108 on average. Uh, these theaters uh, have a tremendous uh, uh, impact on surrounding businesses, as you can imagine. Uh, businesses near the theaters 
uh, attribute 10 to 15% of their total sales on theater patrons coming into their stores either before or afterwards. Um, and three quarters of neighboring businesses experience higher sales when the theaters show popular shows or events. Uh, the really good thing about these two theaters is that they serve complementary clientele. They don't really compete for clients. Uh, for example, the Capitol serves mainly uh, local residents and uh, residents from nearby communities uh, who are regular theater goers. Uh, whereas the Regent draws a, a, a wider array of folks from outside of 495 or uh, kind of between 128 and 495. Uh, so, and they're serving a wide uh, age range of clientele uh, from children to teens to seniors and baby boomers. Uh, they, uh, besides their business effects, they have a, a, a more esoteric effect on uh, the town's image by offering uh, rich, high-quality cultural entertainment uh, that they really enhance the town's uh, perception as a, a unique, interesting place to visit and to, uh, to be in. And the last, but certainly not least, is uh, these two theaters hire a large number of people, uh, especially uh, young people uh, in some entry-level jobs as well as some higher-level jobs. And uh, just to quickly uh, uh, give you some quotes from the survey respondents, uh, the Regent is a great attraction that brings people to Arlington from all over the region. It's, uh, you have a charming town and we will return. That's from a first-time visitor from Hingham who spent $120 in town. Uh, another, uh, the Capitol Theater is integral to Arlington and is the backbone of the East Arlington Business District. And that was from three people from Arlington who just spent $100 in East Arlington. And then uh, the theater, unnamed, is the lure for us to spend money at local businesses. That's from a, a person from East Boston who had uh, just spent $20 at a local business that wasn't one of the theaters. And then finally, uh, this is a lovely town. We ate in a very nice restaurant only because we came here for a show. That was a party of three from Marblehead that had just spent $90 at a local restaurant. So these theaters are, or the theater sector in general is very important to town. And uh, we had heard that anecdotally over a number of years. The planning department commissioned this, uh, this study to get a handle on exactly how important uh, this sector was to the town's economy. And these are some of the results. Uh, Kevin. Uh, yeah, I don't, was Steve first? Oh, I don't okay. know. I, I no, I, no his, hand, his hand was up when I waved at you, Mr. Chairman, oh, so. Uh, that's fine. quite all right. You're up. No, go for it. Uh, just a couple of questions, if I may. Thank sure. you uh, for this information. When you were quoting the $60 average spending, $108, right. the, the, that was in the theater, or that's in Arlington? That, that's in Arlington. That was, uh, yeah, that was, um, they, the averages reflect about $12 for a theater ticket, and then the rest of the spending was outside of the theater. And it, it, does the Regent have more out-of-town visitors than the Capitol? Or yes, they that is they, correct. They, yes. they do. They do. And I guess my, what do we do with this? Do we force a theater into Arlington Heights? Uh, but you, what, what that do we was now, my question. That what was do my we now do with this information? It's interesting. It's but it, it is very interesting. I think it really uh, highlights the importance of the arts and entertainment and cultural uh, sector of the town's economy. And um, certainly uh, we are uh, interested in um, having those type of businesses come into town and occupy vacant commercial spaces where possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, are certainly cognizant of um, some of the uh, comments we receive from the, uh, these uh, types of businesses in terms of other studies we're doing, such as the parking study for Arlington Center. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we've gotten several comments uh, from arts and cultural institutions like the theaters that they need dependable parking as well as parking that's longer than two hours in duration. Uh, because mo a lot of movies are longer than two hours or if people want to go to a show and then dine out or shop afterwards or before, they need longer term parking than the two hours offered in many places. 
Would we therefore now look at the economic impact of Chinese restaurants in Arlington, the economic impact of funeral homes? I'm, I'm not trying to be fresh. I'm just no. uh, we certainly are, uh, are at the planning department level. We are certainly looking at uh, some of the major employers in town from some of the econometric data we're gathering as part of the master plan process and we're targeting sectors that we think are growth sectors for the future or who are very important employers now. Okay. We'd like to learn some more facts about them uh, and their effect on uh, the town's businesses. Okay. So we will be looking to do similar types of studies in-house in the future okay. uh, for either emerging growth sectors of the economy or important employment sectors. In the Thank you. It, it was well done. I mean, Thank I you. I just wondered why we did it, but, but yes. it was well done while we did it. Thank yes, you. thank you. Steve. Well, thank you, and I appreciate Kevin's comments. I think mine might echo his a little bit. Um, first is that I, if in this study, I, I would have liked to see the Friends of the Drama involved. Uh, I sure. think um, if, if you're going to do a conclusive study of you know, all of the theaters in town, they, they should have been involved. Um, I guess I'm also just a bit confused what you're going to do with this data now. Um, you know, you have all these numbers, and while I think, you know, that they show that the region and the capital are two of our marquee places in town, and I, I, I don't think that's, and I hate to say it like this, that's not earth-shattering information for us. We knew that they are, you know, these are why, we know that a lot of people come to the town for the region and the capital, and I guess, um, what are the next steps with this, you know, analysis that you have? Well, I think it's certainly um, beneficial to get a greater depth of knowledge about things that seem pretty obvious on the surface uh, and learn to the depth to which they affect local businesses. And it will help us in the future to inform policymakers such as yourselves about uh, emerging economic development trends or economic development issues if we can catalog the various impacts local businesses have. Mm. Um, and it really helps us to develop an understanding of um, how uh, local, Im local businesses impact each other and how outside events impact local businesses and in terms of the town's economy mm. as a whole. So we're really doing this to get a better understanding of the town's economy and how we can inform uh, policymakers such as yourselves uh, the town manager and, and town meeting members in a better way. I am. Um, and when you look at, you know, you talk about looking at the arts, um, you know, I guess industry in general, and you'd want to bring in, you know, businesses in, you know, that field into our vacant spaces. I mean, how do you see, like, you now that you s we see that the capital in the region, you know, really thrive or you know help our economy to th thrive what are you like what do you foresee in our vacant spaces having to do with this well it's we'd like to know what sort of businesses would be beneficial for us to possibly try to at attract into town uh, we'd like to try to attract businesses that have growth potential or that could have large impacts on existing businesses in town um, now, do you have any, you know, like a framework for the type of business, you know, that you would like to see well, off this study? We, this study helps uh, underline in our mind that the arts and creative sectors uh, that are emerging, especially in the Capitol Square area, mm -hmm. are, uh, can be important businesses in town that have beneficial effects. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the town's employment base and the town's uh, economic uh, base. And so, you know, this is a new area for the planning department, economic development, economic development planning. Uh, part, so what this study is helping us to develop a groundwork of knowledge that will help us do effective economic development planning in the future so we know which businesses will, are most beneficial uh, to a town like Arlington and that can really help us in the future and which might be beneficial to try to attract into town if that's the direction that uh, the policymakers in town want to move forward with. And one, one final thing, um, and um, I, if one thing I would have really also liked to see in the study is I know you can't, you know, force the 
people that you ask on the street to say anything in particular, but I, I would have liked to see, um, you know, more a little bit more criticism, I think, to show, you know, what we could work on, um, as I opposed to, <laughs> you know, a lot of, you know, friendly statements about, sure. you know, what I, we're doing. I do right have some selected uh, mm -hmm. criticisms, if you will. You know, I, I saw those on okay. the back. I just thought that, in general, the whole report was, you know, a real feel-good report, which is nice, and that's important as well, but I think that with criticism, you can do a little That's bit more That's noted, yes. Thank you. Good point. Diane? Um, either the town manager or, or Mr. Fields, Ted. Um, approximately how much should we pay for this particular study? And the reason why I ask this is when um, the town manager proposed um, various positions, recycling coordinator and things like that, along with an economic development officer, one of the sort of caveats or um, positive benefits was that we would have, instead of doing everything piecemeal and putting things out to consultants, that we would have that person in-house working with our planning department. And uh, I and the rest of my colleagues, we need to sell everything that we do through, through our town departments. And I can just tell you, looking at this from first blush, um, I'm really wary of, with the exception of construction projects, to me, boom, you're getting consultants on that. But when we put things out to study, similar to what my colleagues have said, this report, um, well, first, I, I didn't let you answer how much we paid for this. I don't want to quote you the wrong figure, so I, I can't quote a figure unless Ted knows a figure off the... Uh, it was around $10,000. Okay. And then um, it's kind of like, um, just looking at the goal of this, I would say for future studies that we can't do in-house, but that's kind of why we went down having an in-house economic development person that, similar to what my colleagues have already said, Mr. Byrne and uh, Mr. Greeley, I was trying to, you know, you said some of the things that you were looking for in the report we're doing in the master planning study for, right. um, East, uh, for the center. So that kind of, to me, makes this document move. Um, it's kind of like I equi equivalent to every time we go out for a study, we're doing it because we have a goal. And I, I don't want a study being done just to, as you said, we, we are already knew this, but it's nice to see it in print. I'd rather not do those kind of studies. It's kind of like you gave me a study that says Arlington gets snow in Arlington, I mean, Arlington gets snow in Arlington, that we're running out of places to put it. And then you stop there. It's like, yeah, I know that. I didn't need a study for that. But if you do a study on that topic and then it says, you know, we, we identified this is your problem, here's a solution. So basically, to me, can we be more careful in the future in terms of, um, and I'm not saying we shouldn't have consultants and do studies, but, you know, I don't know that I could really defend this, um, even though it's only $10,000, you know, when you're talking about, you know, user fees at the high school, and you're talking about, you know, senior citizens who want to rent this, you know, town-owned offices who used to get it for free and now they have to pay 25 or whatever it is. There's a new proposal. To them, 10,000 is a lot, and I don't justify this. So if we could just be a little more cautious in the future um, and sort of, um, I mean, those are my comments. I'm not saying because I'm agreeing with Mr. Greeley and Mr. Byrne that they share those, but I really want a sort of a process that when we do have a study that we can't do it in-house with the economic developer and the re de planning department and that it has a goal um, yeah, no, I think we can certainly take that into consideration. Absolutely. Joe? Thank you. I, I mean, I think my colleagues have raised some valid points, but I'd, I'd like to actually speak to the study itself that we do have in front of us and how we might actually um, take advantage of it. I, mean, I found a few things in this actually um, interesting. Um, some of the, the information in here about how many times uh, patrons had actually come previously um, the ca case of capital was an average of 4.2, the Regent was 2.6, and the, um, the patrons who were surveyed, well, 98% of those who were surveyed said that they had intended to come back to, to shop, shop and eat. I could see a few ways that we could leverage this, and some of these do, do speak directly to what we as a board are going to have to grapple with. I, I think that Mr. Fields addressed one of them. Um, I know the manager and I were at the... Um, the uh, open house for the for the uh, center traffic parking study the other night, and uh, we heard a lot of the needs around the um, the theaters, and I've been hearing this as well in in, in the center um, around some of the issues, some of the confusion in in the uh, parking garage, the way some of our our regulations are out of sync with what is actually brought in, and how some larger, longer run shows 
could be uh, could be a potential if we could solve some of the issues. Some of them have been brought to us and have been referred to TAC, like the issue of placements of bus stops and drop-offs and, and things like that. Th those will be issues that we'll have to deal with. I would see something like this, uh, now that we, we have it, being used um, in some of our, our outreach, not even necessarily um, to the, the creative um, the creative economy, but also other uh, businesses that are looking to potentially locate here, because what I'm seeing is um, some data in here about the spin-off effects for other businesses. Now, I know you've done one round of outreach with um, your incubation Correct. workshop and such, and I, I understand that's potentially bearing some fruit um, up, at, up in the heights. Right. Um, you know, I'd hope that we would do some more general outreach for businesses and potentially looking to locate mm -hmm. into vacant properties, and that this might be the type of thing that we could give them to say th this is a potential benefit to your business choosing Arlington coming here. So we have it, we, we should use this to the, to the greatest extent possible. The other, um, <coughs> Could chart, you, the chart. Oh, could I ask you a question on sure, that? Sure, sure, sure. But where it's limited to only theaters, it's only a theater that we would use this study for to say. I don't think so because it's it's actually a lot of the report is actually talking about the spin-off effects on retail and restaurants, and it's breaking it down with um, the impact on businesses that are open only until six, the impact on businesses that are open after six. There is there is a lot of that type of data in, in here, and that the average spend at the at the restaurants as well. So I think that that's, Actually, I agree. I think can, that that's, can I that's ask a question on that, just to that end? When I think of, when we've set, you know, economic development in Arlington and when we look at it, as well as what's in here and what's not in here, we, we rarely have three areas. We have our own, only industrial zone up by Gold's Gym. Right. Then we have what I'll call East Arlington, offshoot more on Broadway, and then right. we have Summer Street. Right. I, c I don't see anything in here that would be an effective tool to lure a, and I'm not making this as a critique on you, I'm just saying, you know, if I had some kind of document like that in the future that says I've looked at your industrial zone, because I w remember years ago when I became a selectman, I went out to flag companies, you know, then it was Filene's, now it's Macy's and Baby Gap and things like that, and they said, I said, how, how can we get you to Arlington? How can we get you to the industrial zone? And one of the biggest complaints we're hearing about the theaters is there's no, no parking, and that's going to continue to be a challenge with the exception of the industrial zone. So if you could in the future, what I was always told was you go out to flag companies, you say, hey, there's a way the town can contribute one third of the cost and we'll build your design, you pay two third. So I don't, I don't think in the areas that, what Joe's saying is I don't, I don't think in the three areas that we have. Joe, I don't think it's finished what he was trying to say. Yeah, no, I just was trying to wonder where, okay, I, I didn't see where, where it was going. I thank you, Paul. The la last thing I found that was interesting here that I, I think is interesting as we, as we look at the whole town, I, I think to what one of the things that Mr. Greeley asked about sectors, looking at sectors is, um, on uh, section three in the economic data analysis, there is a breakdown here of the, um, the change of uh, uh, businesses and jobs uh, by, by sector here. And it, it's, although the numbers, the raw numbers are, s are small, I thought it was interesting to see that the, uh, from 2001 to 2012, the percent change in, in number of businesses that have been created, 62% for arts, entertainment and recreation was the largest of any of the sectors in here and the the job growth was, was the second second largest. It's just an interesting trend. It's something that we should understand. This should be plowed back into the master plan as yes. well, and I'm, 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 I'm sure that it will be. Um, but uh, that to me is, is helpful in understanding the town. I, I think we could argue whether it's $10,000 help, worth helpful, but uh, it's, it's uh, a useful uh, data point for me. Um, I definitely had some thoughts myself, and then I'll ask if anyone else wants to try to go again. Um, so I, I learned a lot reading this report. I thought it was very interesting. I will say that some of the stuff that I hadn't, um, I definitely knew that the capital uh, drove traffic downtown, and it, it drove traffic and drew business downtown. I had not in any, uh, at all appreciated the role of the region. I had not appreciated how much money that it brings in. I was pretty stunned when I got to uh, page 22 where I learned how much more money actually comes in from the region than the capital because the capital essentially gets so much more um, visibility because the number of people, but the per capita, so the per capita spending was so much higher for the re region that I, was, I found that um, quite interesting. Um, 
So I, I, I really, I thought this was a very interesting report. Um, as far as the meta question about whether or not we can defend this report, I personally think that I am delighted that we did it. And I encourage uh, you and the manager of the planning department to continue to do investigations <coughs> along these lines. I think about the data that we got here, and I think about how it's going to impact our decision making going down the road. The question is, like, so as a number of my colleagues said, what are we going to do with this? What's the next step? And I think about the decisions that we're making in the master plan. Those are best informed by data rather than anecdotes. I think about the decision that we're making about what we should do with our parking and like what our parking meters should look like and what that is. I think that those are going to that's going to be informed by this. I think about decisions that we make as a board about what the hours of operation, what should, re when should restaurants be permitted to be open, when should they not be open. Uh, we periodically get, we're a very dense town, and as you, we all know, we get people who come up and they, to us and they say, you know, this particular business is causing me this problem, or this particular resident area is causing me this problem. So my question is, why do we permit these businesses to act in ways that definitely in some ways impact neighborhoods? And the answer is because they drive this significant economic activity, and that's why we make the compromises that we do. Uh, and I think about like when we want to position the town to other bodies, mm. whether they're to other businesses or whether they're neighboring towns or anything like that, I think that this particular document really helps us do that. So to me, this is gold, and I think of this as $10,000 for this, I think is um, money well spent. Uh, I will make, um, and so now having given that rant, I will now move on to, uh, so one thing that did come up a couple times in this document that I think bears further exploration and I would encourage you and uh, the planning department to look into, um, both vacancy rates and turnover rates. Um, yes. I think it would be good to have those quantified so that we know when better, when we're doing well and when we're doing poorly. Um, because obviously businesses turn over in town, we see some of the same spaces turning, right. uh, yeah. So just future project on that one. So I suspect that I will have generated a reaction. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I in no way wanted to say that ga the gathering of this information isn't useful, um, is, isn't something that I don't want to preclude the planning department, the redevelopment board, and the economic um, developer from doing this. That was the whole mission and goal. Um, I want them to, to gather data like that. What I'm saying is, um, I just want money more well spent. I, I know and firmly believe that we have the expertise in the planning department, um, adjunct redevelopment board, and with the additional position that I, I can see them being able to gather this data. Um, and you know, the fact that it was a $10,000 study doesn't tell me that it was a huge man of task. So I'm just saying going forward in the future, um, I do want the planning um, department and Mr. Field and others to do that. Um, and, also with the caveat that when the task is so great and along with the town manager, you do need an outside study, that's fine. But So I in no way want to say you shouldn't be doing this. I, I think you. you should. Kevin? <laughs> no, never, I would never. <laughs> I would, so I, I I, I, at some point I would like to. I, yes. I apologize. I well, apologize. no, you and Joe have helped me to look at this uh, differently as, as did uh, Mr. Fields' comments uh, in, in terms of how this data could be used. My point is, it's on two theaters. It's in two businesses of the town. Yeah. We didn't know we have a parking problem in this town before the study. We don't have that quantified in other ways. I'd much rather understand why we've lost 60% <coughs> of the jobs in manufacturing, 24% mm -hmm. in retail trade, 18% in real estate. This study tells me if you open a theater, Good for you. No one's going to open, I don't believe anybody's going to open another theater in Arlington. I, I think Stephen's point was outstanding. Why wasn't, you know, the Friends uh, of the Drama uh, included in this study as well? Certainly a, a theater, and, and uh, it, for that matter, in many ways, even down at the East, uh, the number of, of uh, Arts Council, et cetera, you know. Uh, but so, anyhow, I, I'm just saying. Are we going to do this for Chinese restaurants? Are we going to do this for funeral homes? Are we going to do this for? So, but you, you've helped me see. I, you know, your point is well taken. I, you know, and I, I'm wondering about next steps. What we do with them? Anybody else? Anyone want to move receipt? Well, yeah, I, I think Adam wanted. Oh, Adam. Adam. Adam, I, wanted to, yeah. I, I, Adam, are you here tonight? You're here, right? I apologize. We have to tell me. Just very, very quickly. I, I appreciate all of the board members' feedback, and I think it'd be. It's very clear from what you've all said that a little upfront 
discussion about this before collecting the data and presenting the report would have been a benefit to all of us so there was a clearer understanding of what we were trying to do. Um, with that said, I think a, a larger context in thinking about why we would make this investment and why we would do this is important. Um, community theaters in, in this area and probably across the country, though I can't say that as confidently, are closing. Uh, a lot of communities would die to have a theater in, in town. That's not a Lowe's or a showcase, you know, that's, that's on a Route 9 or something like that. A place you can walk to with your family or, or drive down the street and go to your family. So. Um, Quantifying, like the chairman said, not, not just having an, uh, an anecdote that it's a nice place to go, but having data that they are true economic engines that are unique economic engines. They're not restaurants, they're not retail shops. Retail shops don't bring people in to go eat. A theater does do that. A theater brings somebody in to see a show that might buy a gift for their family and go to dinner. So they, they are a unique attraction and quantifying what they mean for the economy is very important. And I, and I think the biggest part for me in, in the immediate future is the board in the next probably six months to a year is going to be asked to consider what are most likely some significant changes in parking uh, policy for the downtown or the Arlington Center area. And having this be a big piece of that and understanding what the economic impacts of making policies that I don't want to say favor the theater, uh, but take into account the economic importance of the theater will be important for the board to have that and not just be dealing in it anecdote, but rather in data. So again, I say everything you've said, it certainly uh, shows that we should have had the discussion more up front, but I do think there's a great value in, in the work that we did. Uh, so just a quick question for Adam. When you, and I, I understand your points and I, I do appreciate it. And you're, you're not suggesting that there would be some sort of public assistance if our theaters started to you know not do so well financially and came on the brink of potentially closing um, no I, I, if I said anything like that no I, I didn't mean okay. that no I just wanted to make sure thank you so move to see we have second. a mo motion and a second any further discussion thank you for that lively conversation <laughs> all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. opposed five zero we have received thank you very thank much. you very much thank you all right Next up. Uh, He'll be rushing back to us. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a for approval from the Transportation Advisory Committee uh, signs to be changed uh, at Lowell Street. Uh, how do you want to handle this, Mr. Chairman? Do you want to table it or do you feel that we can act upon it without their presence? Um, I think that, so I personally, I'm ready to act on it. If, um, if the board is ready to act, then let us do so. I if someone wishes ready. to wait for a better time, I would. they should make that motion. I'm ready. I'm comfortable. I'm ready. Move approval. approval. Second. Suspicion. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oh, sorry. Next up, Bow Street recommendations. So we had correspondence received, and the gentleman came and spoke to us about the problems on Bow Street. We referred that to um, Officer Cho through the town manager. He came back with a recommendation. The town manager is saying, now let's refer that recommendation back to TAC because that would end parking on Bow Street. And um, that would. That, no, that's, that's an old memo. Uh, oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. No, it, it's recommending sure why a that. plan of action. Hmm? So we're, the, the end result you'd like is referral to TAC. Is that correct? Mr. So I'm, I'm sorry, this is the memo I had sent to the board when the original e email originally came in. And then oh. Right, yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's recommendation, I think it's the last line I of the second paragraph. I was confused, I apologize. Um, I, I had them in different time order. So we have a recommendation from our officer Rateau, which is to post no parking signs on Bow Street. Can I just? Yes. Um, I did go out, because we've all gone down that street a thousand times, but let me go out with the purpose, it's differently. So I did go out um, and then happened to come upon officer Rateau in the the selectman's office catching up on business. And when I went out there, as he states, it's two yellow stripes, similar to Lake Street, I would call it, um, very narrow, at the top end of Bow, so where you're at Downing Square, on the left and the right, there are either three or four no parking signs. And then once you hit, there's a business in there with a big driveway, I forget what it is, the no parking, so th there already is no parking on the upper end. Um, and I, the person who came in was saying, you know, they've had their car out there and they've um, lost a couple of mirrors. And I've been down there, and it's amazing how much for road rage. Like, if I go down, I'll stop and let the other person go. Even if I got there first, I don't care. 
but I've had, I've A, had people beep the crap out of me from behind, and I've seen people play chicken like that. So um, we really can't resolve the problem of him using mirrors on that road because of the, the way it's made up and how it's used. Um, you know, like my Howard Street doesn't have two yellow lines down it. So um, unfortunately, you know, this is the, the end result, but we did ask um, Officer Hill and the police department to look at it, and I think it, he's just saying continue on with the no parking signs that already exist at the, what I'm calling the upper end. So, uh, thank you. Um, any further discussion? We also don't have a motion on the floor yet. Well, um, the, the gentleman who was before us, does he know this is Corey's recommendation? Uh, no, he didn't. Was Mr. Lockwood notified of tonight's meeting? I'm not sure. Um, I, can I speak to that? Just start on the agenda. Right, no, um, he, uh, Jeff Boudreaux, I believe his name is, um, emailed me on Friday, um, when and how could he get a copy of the report, and I told him it's available first thing Monday morning, and I gave Mrs. Krupalka's email phone number, and I said, or, because they had already prepared a copy of it, you can go down to the town hall yourself. And he said, you know, he responded back, thank you very much. I, can't, I did not get it. I got an email from him today, but it was not regarding this. Right. Other I'm not saying, not I didn't say he had that. to do that, but I told him if you still want the report. This morning, because I went to that funeral, but I didn't hear anything. Yeah. And Mr., what is it, Rockwood? Um, Boudreaux? Lockwood. No, oh, oh, the other that first uh, uh, came into us. He saw it on the agenda, and we never, we've never heard from him. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he's away or whatever. I think, I'm not sure, Corey might have talked to him, but I'm not sure of that. Joe? I'm not quite ready to make a motion. I, I just, I think we're in an unfortunate situation from this memo where it really is illegal to park on that, uh, that street as it stands now. And so uh, just the question before us is, do we post it or do we not, do we not post it? And um, just to that point, but we, we asked uh, the police department, and we're trying to take issues on that TAC does not have to deal with. Yeah. Um, and we asked the police department to look, look at this, and I'm not being sarcastic at all. I'm just trying to get yeah. you to a place to investigate it and to give us their recommendations, which are ba based on law. So to me, our job is already defined. It's defined. I don't, I don't know if we have much choice, I mean, other than how much we want to and you know what the, how, this is how, classic. How, yeah, it's classic of another issue, kind of like the Pandora's box issue that, that yeah. we've had. That when something gets open and we looked at at it, we now have to take an action that maybe they the may not like. proponent did not yeah. like. So, I guess um, I would say that I I think I feel like we still do have a choice because the law is that you can't park and obstruct the law the road. The law isn't we have to post signs. Yeah. So uh, at least as far as I understand the law. So. I, th I feel like we still have the, fr we have freedom to act. I, to m in my mind, I, I still have freedom to act. I am torn, I think, in the same way that others of this board are, is that the gentleman said, could we please have my um, car mirrors not be knocked off? And our answer is potentially, well, don't park your car on the street, which is not the most helpful answer, but even if it's sometimes it's the right one. Mm -hmm. So that's where, you know, it's a, it, yeah. it's a delivering bad news one way or the other. Because I don't, in none of thing that I'm here, none of us I don't think has a solution that actually solves his mirrors and keeps him parking on the street. And and Kevin. prevents his wife from getting a ticket for parking. Yes. Um, I think you said wife, right? Fiance, maybe? Oh, fiance, whatever. I'm sorry. So, uh, let's step into the deep end here. I move that we uh, we place no parking signs as recommended by uh, Officer Rateau. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? I'm opposed. 4-1. Next up, vote to reaffirm human rights resolution. Steve Byrne. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so a couple, few meetings ago, um, I was appointed by my colleagues to the response coordination as the response coordination team liaison, which a role Mr. Curo uh, formerly had. Um, and we had our first meeting the last week, I believe, last week or two weeks ago. Um, and it was myself, Chief Ryan, uh, Superintendent Bodie, uh, Joan Roman, the town's public information officer, um, Nancy Rhodes from the Human Rights Commission, 
Bonnie, who, uh, Bonnie from Vision 2020, uh, David Swim, the pastor at High Rock, and Reverend uh, Christine Elliott from the Calvary Church. And um, it, is, you know, it was my first meeting uh, with the group, and I, I was really impressed by the work that the uh, group has done thus far. They've, um, thankfully, they have not had to been used very often, and when we hope that in the future we still don't have to be used, but it, we're, it's certainly an asset to the town that many people are unaware of. Um, it's, we, we, I think we see the, the committee's role as um, um, do, I want to say communicating with the public. Um, you know, with, with the group, if an event happened, um, I would like to, you know, I think it would be an event like the Westboro Baptist Church coming to town or a group like that. Um, that this team would be ready to form a response and get it out to the public in a, as quickly as possible. And uh, on top of that, also, I think it will provide a support system to those affected. And I, um, I was really happy to be able to join this group. And um, we're at, we decided to ask the Board of Selectmen as well as the school committee to uh, take a vote to reaffirm um, you know, their positive feelings and support toward this group. And um, just know that while you may not see us, we are there and we are um, ready to respond if need be. Um, so with that, I, I hope that you will join us to me in a vote of support. A vote, a second, any discussion? Joe? Yeah, I would just say, yeah, this, this I believe is the exact same resolution that has it, been, that has been um, uh, endorsed in the past by the Board of Selectmen and the school committee. So I think it's just a reaffirmation, correct? Yeah. Correct. Anything else? Uh, so I, my comment is, I, I, the, there are two things about this process that I really think are, that make it so easy for me to support it and why I'm so proud that we have it in town. And the first is the clarity that it gives because human rights violations can be murky and they can be, there can be, there's black and there's white and there's gray. And the um, fact that you can give a set of information to, to a set of people and have them help sort through that in a rational way, I think is incredibly important. So the clarity that they're the center of that conversation. And the second thing that I think it makes it so powerful is the flexibility that they have and what their response is. Because the, it is not, you know, there isn't black and white in many of these situations. And so there's different community responses that are, pro sometimes there's only a response to the committee, sometimes there's a response to different groups. I think, it, I, I think it's a very powerful group, so. Just yes. one final thing, I, will, I was, I, this is not a field that I've, I've really worked in depth in uh, prior to this, and I was incredibly impressed by the work that was done prior um, to myself joining the committee. They, um, they really know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, like when we talk about TAC, we say we're lucky to have, you know, real true professionals who are devoted to, you know, a cause in town, and that's how I feel about this group. And, um, you know, in certain circumstances, they, they might not get the recognition they deserve, but they um, are certainly an asset to our Arlington. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Next up, proposed <coughs> warrant articles. Mr. Kuro. Does anybody want to talk about the creative economy anymore? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, what I'm asking this evening is, um, is simply uh, cognizant of the deadline that we have upon us to, to place warrant articles, um, uh, articles on the warrant. I'm asking for the board support to place two, two articles on the warrant, um, which uh, I think we can discuss further. The first one is, um, a bylaw and just simply creates an honorary position of poet laureate of the town of Arlington. And the genesis of this was a uh, conversation I actually had with the uh, library director, Mr. Livergood, in the um, in the summer, and we were discussing this. And uh, I was asking whether he knew of any other communities that that had this. He said, "I don't know." He said, "Let me think about it." And a number of months later, he came back. He said, "You know, Joe, I think it's a I think it's a great idea." Um, and he had actually researched it and found a number of other communities, including West Tisbury, that have done this. Generally, it's a it's an uncompensated honorary position. Uh, something a little more substantial than our measure of wooden bark, but, but it actually, um, uh, with a proper screening process, it usually would, would um, uh, in a typical implementation, would involve you know, library officials and maybe somebody from the school's English department or whatnot. 
gives an opportunity to highlight, um, you know, for a year, you know, one of our literary um, you know, artists. And I think we all know that the long legacy over the last few years of actions this board has taken, town meeting has taken, to support the um, uh, visual public arts through zoning, through the through um, home rule legislation on on a, um, uh, a funding repository actions this board has taken for the public arts. So these two are actually um, I want to take them one at a time, but they're they're actually looking to further the the um, profile, if you will, of the literary arts that we have here. We have so many um, you know poets and and, and authors who, who call Arlington their home, um, as well as the, the performing arts. Um, I want to thank Mr. Heim because he's sat and, and worked with me and I think as we get into this we may want to have a discussion um, when we come closer to he hearing time about what is appropriately a town meeting uh, action, what, what could be just a policy of the board or done by the board. This evening I'm just asking to get this on the warrant so that we can have that discussion um, um, and, and keep our options open. Um, so if, if I could take them separately, I'll, 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 I'll get a little deeper into the public music one, but um, if I could ask for the board's support um, to add to the, the warrant um, the, the first proposed article, uh, the bylaw amendment uh, for a uh, poet laureate. Is there a second? Um, I'll second. I mean, oh. personally, I sorry, Diane, but I, I believe any selectman wants a warrant article, the selectman should have that warrant article. Can I ask what a poet laureate would do? A poet, what um, is typically done, uh, the poet laureate in other communities over the course of their term, which is generally one to three years, they might, you know, with the permission of the moderator, present at the opening of town meeting something that they've, com they've composed for the town um, of Arlington, or they might present at public uh, meetings, or, um, make themselves available to the schools, um, or make a piece of work available for the annual report that's, that's emblematic of the town, and that's, that's in honor uh, of, of the town. And I would envision this as an honorary, uncompensated position, so obviously. Yeah, Diane, then. Um, I agree with Mr. Greeley that if the selectman wants a proposed warrant article, we're not indicating whether we're gonna um, right. approve it or not. Right. Um, what I wanna say, say right now is um, I want you to speak as long as you want to, but I think we're going to be, be duplicating ourselves because yeah. the process that we normally have is, you know, I definitely want to put these on and okay. definitely want a brief explanation, but what I'm used to, and I don't know if it's, you know, new to that chair or new to that chair, is with every Warren article, even if it comes from a selectman, because I've, we've all done them ourselves, that, you know, we really don't have the in-depth discussion until Great. the proponent has sp spoken to the town council. He has a comment on each article from what I understand the proponent is seeking to and the uh, appointing authority would be and whether this is the town meeting thing or perhaps it's a selectman policy. And then we have that really in-depth discussion because I don't want anyone, you know, but I, I'm yeah. definitely supporting putting both these warrant articles okay. in. Well, th thank you, because I, I did have that, uh, not having gone through this before, you know, I had done some work more in depth than I had discussed it with council. Um, I actually, I, I asked the advice of the town manager so that we weren't, uh, we weren't uh, con conferring and we, we realized that could be a, a, a problem. Uh, so um, I do have some more work that I can bring forth at, at the appropriate moment uh, around these. Um, so I don't know, maybe is it in, mo in order for me to just move to place both of these articles on the warrant? Second. We have a motion. I'm supporting the first one. I'm wondering why don't we already do the second one? <coughs> Sorry, Mr. Chair. That's Great, right. yeah. at, the, at the risk <laughs> of getting into more in-depth discussion, we have a very short one-line um, bylaw which says public music uh, on public ways is prohibited except by permission of the Board of Selectmen with no other framework around it and it only addresses music and no other performing arts. And with some things coming down the pike, including um, the performing arts terrace by the information booth and some of the requests we've been getting around First Fridays and, and, and block parties and such, I think I, I was hoping we could put some framework around it, either through bylaw or bylaw with, with policies of this board. And it would stay with the board, with yes. the board of selectors. Yes. Okay, I support both. Diane? And just taking the opportunity on that, um, whatever the town manager and town council 
do in terms of their management style, but similar to what Mr. Grilly just said and what Mr. Kiro just said, what we've gotten in the past is, you know, the understanding, this is the goal, this is what is in the current law, and then town council would usually say something to the effect of, I agree with the proponent, there's missing language, or uh, I think it's redundant that it also appears here, but it's up to the board. Um, so if you could just work out sort of what your management style is reporting to the board, it may be a different way. We're, you know, I've, I've been used to one way. Um, if, so whatever way, you, you know, works best for you. May, may I add just a, a second that? I don't think the intention uh, here is to change uh, the past practice with respect to developing a report that includes some comment and it's helpful for the Board of Selectmen in considering what they want to do both at hearing and at town meeting. Um, all of the selectmen here are very gracious and supportive of one another in putting uh, town warrant articles on, but uh, technically speaking, you wouldn't necessarily have to be that gracious and could decide that you didn't want uh, something to be as submitted by the Board of Selectmen. So that's the purpose of voting to merely place the warrant article uh, as proposed Mr. Kirk Curo on the warrant as basically inserted at the request of the Board of Selectmen. And my thing is, until we get the meat of the, the pie and we know what the, especially on the second Warren article, and get your opinion on it, whether the law, and I'm not saying it isn't because I haven't done any research on it, whether what, what we, we have in the town by it law needs to be supplemented, um, edited, or whatever, um, I, I, I understand my approval to say, yes, we accept these, they will appear as proposed Warren articles. You'll sit down, give your initial evaluation. We'll have the public hearing discussion, and that's when we vote up and down. I'm, I believe my vote is, and correct me if I'm wrong, not necessarily that I'm supporting both of these. I'm supporting that he doesn't have to go out and get ten registered right. votes. We have a motion on the floor to put them on the war, put these articles as written on that's the board. Exactly that's exactly what I'm voting on. Yeah. That's that's correct. Yeah. Steve, I apologize. I called on you, and then the conversation started. It, and it, I forgot. it happens. Don't worry. Sure. Um, first, I, I like the idea of the. Uh, I think that um, we have that what you touched on, we are, you know, missing the literature of the arts to a certain extent uh, in our recognition, and I, I think that's a creative idea. Um, I, I like that you mentioned potentially doing it as a policy change. Um, I think, as opposed to a, a bylaw change, I think that could work. Um, but either way, um, I think it's a cool proposal. Um, that I will support. Um, and, and with the, um, the second um, article with public music, I, I read through the bylaw today and I, you know, while I do, I can see why, how this could be appropriate, um, it's a little more accepting, I think, to, you know, the use of public music in town and I think um, it's kind of lightens up the Lang current language. I don't know if it will actually change the status quo at all. Um, I think that it will still, you know, could, that it will still come before. How I took it at least is that it would still, you know, any, you know, type of, would still have to approve anything before it comes to town. So I think that if, that's how I read it, that it would just lighten up, you know, the current tone of it. And is that what you think as well, Joe? At the risk of uh, trying to avoid getting into the substance, I just want to tell you what I've shared with um, town council and, and ask for his assistance with, which I hope that at a hearing time we can bring forward as either either a, rec a recommendation for a recommended vote of this board or a recommendation for a recommended policy of this board as, as the board sees fit. Um, we've looked at um, at least three other communities in Massachusetts and tried to synthesize um, ordinances and bylaws that they, they have on the books, which just provides a, a better framework. Because right now when we get these requests, I don't know that we have a specific policy. We, we do them pretty much on an ad hoc basis. So this is to, to hopefully by, by adding some framework, or well, it seems more regulatory, it'll actually also send the message that we've thought about this. Okay. And, and um, anyway, that's the intent. Okay, cool. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, Five-zero. Next up. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, <coughs> manager of vacation carryover request. Move approval. Your motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Um, so, Adam, I've got a question for you. Yeah. And this is channeling my former FinCom days and all that good stuff. Uh, so we 
I know in, the, in FinCom we, were, we pushed departments and department heads to, to essentially not permit these requests to access to, because we don't want to, it's bad for us, it's, it's difficult for us to financially manage having large numbers on the books Correct. and stuff yeah. like that. And so I just wanted to ask, is this like 20 <coughs> days in total or is this 20 days additional this year or where are you and what are your thoughts on all that? So that's, it's 20 days so, uh, in my first contract year, yeah. uh, even a further step back, contractually there is an allowance to carry over 10 days without the board's yeah. approval. So in the end of the first contract year, um, I had 10 days left. So I carried that over with the 20 days that I earn over the course of the year. Uh, so with what I used between uh, vacation and personal time this year, I believe I still had 21 days in that queue. So this would roll over those 20 into 2014 while still being awarded 20 days in 2014. Okay. So your total accumulated bank is 20. It's not like 20 plus a previous number. So well, no, it would be it would it would be the okay. previous number is 20 yeah. plus the the 20 that would be awarded this year. I'm sorry, I meant like there's only 20 aged. Yes, correct, yeah. that is okay. correct. Uh, so I, I will support the motion, but I will say that um, I'm gonna be, it, like next year, mm -hmm. come next year, I'm like if I see a request for 40, I'm probably gonna vote no. Oh, I, and I, so, I understand which that. Is, which is another way of saying I'm, encur as I'm encouraging you to take vacations. <laughs> I know that you do, we get memos when you do, but at the same time, uh, there's a certain element of this that I think is use it or lose it. Yep. So I'm, I think that this number is healthy. I'm totally in favor of it. I'm just talking about the future. Yeah, I understand that. Diane. Can I just say ditto to that? Because yeah. I think, you know, where we've encouraged through fin finance committee in town meeting, in town meeting yeah. for all our other employees that, uh, that we have to do the same stand and it, that this is the exception and not the norm. Um, that may mean you yeah. may come up again. I'm not going to say yeah. it's never going to come up again, but I. Yeah. You said it better than I, I think I doing it in limited but numbers is appropriate. Right. But doing it like, you know, yeah. the, the days of banking 400 days and then uh, paying them out at the end oh, of the yeah, year, yeah, that yeah, I really, yeah. I really don't want to do that. Yeah. So it would be pretty cool if you stuck around for long <laughs> enough to do that, which would bring us to our next item. <laughs> anyway, uh, I need we any further discussion? Okay, well, Kevin. Uh, because, it's, because of who he is, I support this, but I, I'm also leery. Uh, I mean, this is a month. You know, mm -hmm. five days a week, 20 days, that's four weeks. Uh, w this town would die with you gone a month. Uh, I could take over. Don't misunderstand. <laughs> you know, but, but so, but just uh, you, if you do take vacation, you're very clear who's left in charge. You let us know about it well in advance. But yeah, at, at carrying over 20 days, since you will be in this job another 30 years, that would mean 600 days you'd be owed by the end of your career. No, and I, I understand no, no, the I know, I know. You, impact you, of that. You can't carry that over, but uh, because it's Adam, I suppose. And the hits keep coming. <laughs> Any further discussion? No, kidding. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Five zero. Thank you. All right, next up, um, town manager evaluation. I'm actually going to talk probably in some ways talk about the evaluation <coughs> and the contract negotiation are next two agenda items. I'm going to be making comments about uh, both to open. So uh, last year, so uh, sorry, at the end of February, uh, Adam will be reaching his two-year anniversary on the job. His initial appointment was for a three-year term, and his contract was for three years. And if we are not going to renew the contract, we would have to notify him by the end of February in order to avoid the payout clause. Personally, I have no intention and would fight anything that wants to trigger that. At the same time, what I, if we, uh, we also, um, last year, we did his performance review a sort of uh, after his one year anniversary. And I think that in general, it's healthy to do a performance review before you do the, the contract negotiation. Mm -hmm. Though in this particular case, I'm not sweating it because I'm trying to, I'm gonna actually gonna ask that we kick them both off. But if we do the performance review now, it kind of, it's actually technically a little bit less than a year than the last one, but it puts us on a time frame such that going forward, we would be able to mm -hmm. do it before um, negotiation period, which I just think is a healthy thing. Uh, so now focusing for the moment on the evaluation, you all have the instrument that we used last year, and so we're all here, so we all know what it looks like. Um, I would suggest that on number one, we're talking about the period of review is March 1st 
Uh, we could either say to January 31st or we could say to the current date. I think that both of those are essentially appropriate. Mm -hmm. And the town manager will submit a narrative self-evaluation. A copy of the narrative um, will be provided to back to us. And so I talked with the manager br over email uh, briefly today. And Adam, you said that you could provide it to us that it would be in our packets before the next meeting, yes, which is uh, Friday the 24th. And we'd get that um, review back from him. And then uh, I wanted to get agreement. So we would have something in available to us on Friday the, the 24th. And I wanted to talk about what we thought was appropriate for time frames for us to then read it and then write our own version and return it back. I was thinking along the lines of two weeks, which would put us at um, November 13th, but I'm also, is February 13th. Uh, sorry, February 13th, is that? I was gonna say, that's yeah. a long two yeah, weeks, buddy. Weird, yeah. <laughs> does that sound okay to people? That's All right, uh, then, I'm g then we hand those over to Karen, our, and Karen will put <laughs> them together in a single document. I'll review that single document. I'll share it with the board and the town manager and then we'll have a public discussion at a subsequent meeting, Pro not to BD, but probably two weeks after that. The, you know, just. Well, we have to do it before the 25th, don't we? I don't, we don't. So I'm actually gonna suggest that we kick off negotiations without worrying about them. Okay. I'm, I'm saying we decouple them. But I think, um, but in fact, why, yeah, so why don't we have that conversation at the same time? My suggestion under when we get to number 14 is that we kick off negotiations immediately. The, the, we, I'm, I'm going to ask the board to uh, authorize me to negotiate an, uh, an extension to the town manager's contract. Because I personally, so my thinking on this, just so you know where I was, uh, was I agree that in a perfect world, we would have the results of the performance review before we do the negotiation. But as a matter of practicality, we don't have a lot of leeway way in our negotiation to reward or penalize the town manager for, I mean, if we're penalizing him, we're firing him. And if we're rewarding him, I don't think we really have the flexibility to do that because of the way it uh, raises work with, with um, union contracts and how it makes sense for the manager's compensation to be linked to that. So I don't anticipate a negotiating a contract that has like bonus structures or anything like that in it. So if I did, then I would be trying to do them one after the other. But I feel like, and I know, th I mean, each one of us has a vote in this. My personal vote will be to try to retain Adam. I'm delighted with the work he does, and I don't want him to go. And so I want to negotiate and extend his contract immediately. So that's why I'm suggesting a time frame where, uh, and even, yeah, wh where we do that. So the dates would then be that we would come back um, and we would we'd have a finalized document, which we would discuss publicly. Mm -hmm. And while the, my intent is that we would only discuss the consensus document, as a matter of fact, all documents associated with each of us are individual ones, and the town managers are public documents which anyone could obtain. So we, we, we just need to be cognizant of that. It's a function of us being a public body managing a town employee. So, Diane. Just um, one question. Yes. Um, and I don't know if it's the town manager or if it's our human resources director, yeah. Karen Malloy. If in going, like I perused through this, you know, not ha having looked at it for over a year. Um, if we feel there is a new goal that can be measured um, after discussion either with the town manager or Karen Malloy and they agree that it isn't already incorporated into one of these bullet points, and um, for me it would be something under a board support relations, um, would it be appropriate if any selectmen or, or, or in any other area in here, you know, because uh, when you go through a performance review, it's measurable goals and, and you know, there's some, sometimes you cover everything, but sometimes things flush out in time. So I'm just wondering, w can any selectmen, including myself, and I'm not saying I'm um, going to want to add an additional goal. I'm going to speak, I guess, with the town manager. Um, and if he says, no, this is where you, you rate me on that, or if he agrees that it should be added. So I think my take on it is that we are agreeing to rate him this year using this document. Oh, okay. And each section has a comments, which means, you know, you get to add anything you want ad hoc. Mm -hmm. But if you want to make it, if you were, if you, if you were prepared to make a change right now, I'd say let's do it. Or even if, if frankly, if you, if you said, you know, I think this document needs revision, could we please table this and come back in a couple weeks? I mean, I certainly would listen to that motion. But I, I think what we're doing is we're agreeing to use this instrument right now with a lot of 
leeway, I think, in it. I and then yeah, next year. Yeah, I prefer to move on, and okay. then I'll do it as a comment, and then discuss it with the town manager. Yeah. And it, because I don't want to waste anybody's time, we're ready to move on. And if he says keep it in the comments sections, or if he says yes, that's a measurable goal, this is where you should put it, and propose it to the board next year. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, oh, I, I was just going to uh, mention uh, if last year. We surveyed other instruments that had been done. We passed out and asked each of you <coughs> to comment on this instrument. So this is ours, right? right? So, but, you know, if there's a window where if she wants to say, you know, there's one more item I'd like to add, I, it's okay with me, but. For uh, next, I'll, I'll do that next year. All right. I would like to move that uh, we move forward with the evaluation process as outlined by the chairman. And concurrently, concurrently, mm -hmm. at the same time, <laughs> we authorize the chair to proceed with contract uh, negotiations with the town manager. And I agree with him wholeheartedly, tie this guy down for as long as we can. He does an excellent job. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? John. I'll support, I'll support the motion. I, I just hope, uh, if I'm following your timeline, we will have an opportunity to see the evaluations before we finalize the, the, the contract. We can, that's, make that's that, we can make that happen, yes. As a matter of principle, I like that, even though I, conc I right, concur right. with you, I can no, no, concur right, with Mr. Sure. Greeley. I, mean, yeah, I, I assume that. I assume yeah, we're going to see the evaluations we can make that happen, before but, but we vote on This is a matter of principle. I, I think that that's, that's important. But I just agree. I think it can happen. Discussions can be going on simultaneously, I but I agree. Evaluations need to be completed before we would sign off on a final contract. Yeah, I see. I agree. Uh, further questions, comments? You so I do with all that. I yeah. absolutely do. Um, I do just have a general sense of the board. Um, so the original term was three years. We've done two. Um, are we looking for, say, like a two-year extension, such that it would essentially be signing a three? You know, I would think of it as a three-year deal, so to speak. Or, are we tr or is the board interested in thinking about something longer? Or is, the b w w is there any guidance that you want to give me along those lines? I'd be, more, I'd be um, interested in terms of what the town manager's thoughts are that in terms of what he is seeking. Do you want to hear that right now? Yes. Okay. If, 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 <laughs> it's, if it's appropriate. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want to put him on the spot. We are putting him on the spot, okay. but he cannot answer and would forgive him. No, I, I would come into these discussions um, looking at an additional three-year term. That's how I would approach it. But if longer, that's okay. <laughs> Steve, go ahead. No, I, I just want to say, um, you know, we are, I agree with everyone here that I'm very happy with your performance. And if, um, I, I would be comfortable going upwards of five years if necessary. Okay. Diane? Oh, I saw Joe had his hand up. Oh, I, I apologize. I've already had a yeah. first pass. No, I think I, I agree with Steve as long as there are provisions placed into the, the contract, though, that, that, that <coughs> allow us to reserve reserve rights. But I don't, I don't know what limits we have also on, on, on our ability to do longer. Um, I guess I'm seeking guidance right now, and then, uh, you know, we'll see how it actually shakes out. Because obviously, to, um, so it, it, the way uh, when Clarissa did the negotiation two years ago, uh, we employed outside counsel. Uh, to because of the relationship between the town council and the town manager. And I imagine we would do something similar. So uh, and I've, I'm, I'm sure that we'll, uh, I'm sure that we will have good legal counsel to protect us from doing something Attorney foolish. Attorney Valerio. Yeah. Um, and sorry, Kevin was waving, and then I'll get back to Dan. Was I in? Well, uh, I'm a Steve. I'd like to sign him up for 10 years, but it's a bad precedent for us to set for future boards and future town managers, but, but in this case with this gentleman. Um, I, I'm not sure if we can do this anymore or how we did this before, but uh, with a couple of managers before, what we have done is they have a three-year contract, and each year we had the power to add one more year to that contract, so it was a rolling three-year uh, contract. You know what I mean? If we were, um, so I, I, don't, I don't know if that's legal anymore. Doug, I don't know if you could take it. We'll uh, have to look at the town manager. Act. Yeah, I d uh, we can look at the town manager act. I also don't want to uh, contradict if we're going to have an outside council council look at this, but it's certainly a question that can be examined, and Mr. Dunn can be advised advised as to the legality of an option for renewal under the town manager act. But, but I favor giving him as many years as we can. Yeah. Diane, just 
where you're looking for guidance, and I had had this conversation with the manager a couple months ago. Um, I'm wi willing to have you entertain any d discussions around the fact that Mr. Chaplin was kind enough to just ad adopt the former town manager's contract. Structured in that contract was um, the understanding that we were getting a town manager with many years experience. Um, so some of the decisions that we made when we were on the board that right now apply to the current town manager, and in the interest of being fair, um, like um, no numbers of days to give notice um, if you're going to resign or e pending any catastrophic thing. The way the current number that's in the current contract was figured out, <coughs> it came to agreement upon, and tell me if I'm going into s more detail than I should, Attorney Heim, looked at Mr. Sullivan, what he was coming with, and we were thinking, oh, okay, what if he decided to leave? How many days notice <coughs> do we want to give him? How many days vacation does he have? And we arrived at a number so that if he did decide to leave, we would have him for at least two months. And that's why, if you look at some of the other contracts, that did varying days. So I would ask you just to look at that as well as are there any other, um, you know, because he completely adopted that contract, um, just in the interest of being fair. Okay. as well as, you know, anything else you can get out of him. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chairman, may yeah. I just note that um, I think it's not necessary given the scope of the conversation uh, by the Board of Selectmen right now, but it, uh, and I will, of course, because this is very important to the Board, double check on this, but I believe that the Board can go into executive session also to discuss uh, strategic negotiation with non-union personnel. So it may be an option if the board wants to have further discussions with this after the chair is negotiated, as that seems to be what will happen. Uh, some of these details, if anybody's uncomfortable with that, in open session. So it, should we do that right now? Are you saying we shouldn't be doing this publicly? No, 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 not at all. There's but if there's something people wanted to discuss privately, we do have that legal option for that, I mean, specifically related to negotiations. That's what I'm saying. Okay, is there any further comment? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Correspondence received. So th just uh, that was fourteen and fifteen uh, managed under a single vote. Move receipt. Just one. Second. <coughs> Any further? Just yes, Diane. I, I just want to do a case in point where you know TAC has asked us not to send things their way. Um, and the previous agenda item that we had on um, Rose Street, basically what they're saying is they went out, they did all this investigation, and since there's already an existing law, there's no action required by us. Um, I th think uh, how we handled agenda item, I think, nine, I think that was the type of, uh, you know, case in point scenario that they were referring to that per perhaps could be handled in-house with the police department. and. You know, they, they do do diligence, but, you know, so I just wanted to point that out. I think that's a good case in point. I think it's a point well taken. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Moving on to new business. <coughs> Mrs. Kropalka. Uh, it just came out. <coughs> Monday is the banquet for the Martin Luther King Day is Monday night. Monday night, Martin Luther King banquet. Uh, it is Martin Luther King Day, and we will, the celebration is here in the town hall. Thank you very much. Doug. Uh, the only thing is, uh, uh, just a reminder, to please review the uh, summary of conflicts of interest uh, memo that was distributed. I'm sorry, is that the? Okay. That was the state ethics memo that was. Sta okay, yes. yes. That was issued, I, I sent it out in December. I know it was during the holiday period. I just want to remind all the selectmen that if they haven't already done it, they should take a quick look at it. So we have to do that. Every, we have to do that every two years, right? With respect to the training, you have to have some sort of training every two years. This is actually just an annual review of a state of the law that the uh, state ethics commission asks that public employees just take a quick look at. Thank you, Adam. So just a, f a couple quick items. First, I know the board was informed uh, sometime last year that the legislature and the governor had approved uh, three hundred seven thousand four hundred fifty dollars in microburst reimbursement. Well, I can officially tell you it is in the town's account. We have 100% received the reimbursement, and I think I've said this before, but uh, I want to reiterate the thanks to the board who showed uh, leadership and several board members attended um, a meeting at the State House or several meetings at the State House with me to lobby for these monies, these reimbursements. Uh, I want to thank the legislative delegation. Um, 
They were really the ones who, who got this through the legislature. Uh, and thanks to the staff who put together all of the detailed work to provide. And it's 100% reimbursement is the exact amount we ask for, which doesn't happen very often that you ask the state for a dollar amount and they give you that exact dollar amount to the penny. So uh, it doesn't benefit the budget this year, but uh, will be a revenue that will be available um, most likely in the form of free cash next year. So it's very good for the town. Um, I want to tell the board, um, you're probably all uh, to steal a line from Selectman Greeley, tingling with anticipation for this Wednesday's uh, budget submission uh, from the town manager. So that will be made available to you uh, and to the finance committee uh, this Wednesday. Uh, the big issue, as um, you've probably all, uh, I know we've talked about and we've seen uh, covered in local press, is school enrollment growth and the impact that's having on the school budget. Uh, so unlike the past years, that will be one of the largest pieces uh, included even in my own budget message. So. Um, in the future, um, you know, so I'll submit that budget this Wednesday. Uh, we'll know what the governor's budget numbers uh, the following, I believe the following Wednesday. We'll then update the larger financial plan, and at that point, I'll provide the board with a, a more detailed um, budgetary uh, presentation later later in the budget process. <laughs> I actually am tingling with anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> I love the budget. <laughs> Um, and the final thing I'll say is the salary study, the compensation study, uh, is 99% uh, complete and it will be fully complete before the board's next meeting. Um, I will be here, obviously, and the consultant who performed the study will be here to present the findings to the board. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Would it be appropriate to have uh, some of the union members of the group as well? We're inviting all of them, I, yes. I would be delighted if they joined us. Yeah, I would, I would imagine some of them would, would choose to be here. And that, that's all I have. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Kevin. I'd better get home to bed because obviously I'm going to be up late on Wednesday night as I go through that budget with a fine tooth comb. Um, not, an er not a great area of my expertise, but I certainly appreciate the work that goes into it every year and the data that it provides. But also, Adam um, uh, gives us a lot of credit. When we did go into the State House, uh, Mrs. Mahan and myself and, and Adam, uh, they complimented him on the fact that he already had an itemized budget put together. Part of the, clearly part of the reason we got all that we asked for is because of the work that he did there uh, and submitted that appropriately. So you deserve a lot of credit as well. That's it, sir. Thank you. Diane. In an effort to get Mr. Greeley to sleep, I'm going to say no new business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jeff. You know I just call you and say, well, explain this to me, <laughs> um, just, just one, one item. I wanted to let everyone know that the uh, Master Plan Advisory Committee uh, is going to be having presentations of the various um, working papers that, that will make up the body of the, the uh, Master Plan um, on a monthly basis, uh, topic by topic basis. The first uh, presentation is this um, Thursday, January 16th. Uh, seven o'clock at the um, at the senior center, and the topic will be uh, land use. The land use working paper is posted on the uh, the town's uh, website. Um, I, you know, I'd especially encourage uh, town meeting members who might be interested to to come and um, and uh, hear the presentation because down the road, you know, that very well, you know, possibly could be um, uh, rec requested actions of town meeting and in future years as a result of this. Thank you. No new business. Uh, I have one item. Uh, tomorrow night, the Minuteman School Committee is voting on a proposed um, revision to the regional agreement. Mm. Um, I am really conflicted about it. It does absolutely does not have, it is not the document that we would have written if we had you know, gotten the power to do it ourselves. And it's not the document that came out of the uh, working group that Charlie Foskett served on. That, and I'll, so there's kind of two groups that have been working, I think, as you've heard. There's the, been the working group that Charlie's been serving on, and then there's the, been the town managers, and they kind of both meet one at a time and then send things back and forth. And uh, the, the State Department of Education weighed in on the last w version and uh, were singularly unhelpful. And they forced a number of changes to the proposal that uh, will make it very difficult to support. 
and yet it still may be good enough. It's gonna, we'll see how it goes and we'll see what the conversations are, yeah. So are you going then? Is that um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to go. Uh, I, I mean, obviously, uh, our, we're gonna be represented by Laura Morissette on the school committee. I, I wouldn't go to the Minuteman school committee meeting, but our discussions, you know, are, are about to really begin, depending on what they vote. Tomorrow yeah. night, then our right. The, yeah, so yeah, so they're going to take this vote, and they'll they may you know who knows they might vote it down, or who knows they might change it, or you know, or they may sit on it for a little bit longer. So um, it's going to be it's going to be something that we ponder when it when it when it comes out. So that was my piece of new business. Move to adjourn. Second. Oh, does the favor please say aye? Aye. We are adjourned.